Okay, this was the first class of Physiology of Domestic Animals, and I'm making a recording now. And unfortunately, a cable was loose and did not record the audio. So I'm going to play the video, part of the video that was made, and then do a little voiceover as things progress or as I remember what I said. This is not, of course, as good as <laughs> hearing the original audio, but let's go with it. <clears throat> Okay, I'm explaining different things today. One thing I know I said in the notes, I said draw a line, and this was very early in class, and right under this line, the phrase, everything below this line is testable. That means everything that, <laughs> everything that's coming up could be on the test, or what we call the assessments, whatever you want to call them. I just wanted to make that point. Don't ask, will this be on the assessments? It could be. All, everything could be. I had an infrared thermometer and I was measuring people's arms and my forehead and so forth and so on. I'm not sure what I'm doing at that moment. Uh, I know this doesn't change in a minute. In fact, I'm going to just stop that video from going for a minute and keep telling you what my notes say. So I talked about the infrared thermometer. It measures ambient temperature and that's a word we are supposed to learn, ambient, A-M-B-I-E-N-T the immediate surrounding of an animal or person. So the room, in the room, your ambient temperature is whatever the temperature of the room is, but if you're outside, then your ambient temperature is what's outside, and it was very humid today, and this was the time of the, uh, this is August 21st, when the not quite total eclipse came by us. I also, at the beginning of class, handed out a treat. I didn't say it was a dog treat. I can't remember. Maybe I did. And then at the end, after all 90 some people had looked at it, I asked for guesses what it was. And one person guessed it was a penis. Yes, it was a dehydrated bull penis. And then I went into a little explanation about how this company that I know of collects human food grade bull penises. That might sound weird, but then there's a special process that another company does that makes them basically a dehydrated bull penis that is 100% digestible and no chemicals are ever soaked into it. So I, I'm impressed with that. Somebody during the class also asked about the use of Blackboard and I basically said I don't use Blackboard. It's gotten too complicated. I do all my own stuff and the website that's showing um, it doesn't show up very good, but up in the upper left, it says rodallrich.com, and that's R-O-D-A-L-L-R-I-C-H.com. That's where all our material is, and of course, this will come up here, but I'll look at, uh, yeah, this is recording, um, up here, Physiology of Domestic Animals. That's a class that was being recorded, and the students can click on that phrase or that title, and go to the class material, which it will show in a minute. And then I talked about how we're, we have an assessment coming up Thursday, and some people might think that's weird. The first week of class, you already have an assessment, but I told them about my past great uh, TA, Rochelle, and she's in vet school now, and she texts me. We text back and forth. We're good buddies. And she said, hey, I'm going to have a quiz already this Thursday. And, you know... That's that's how I work, too. The more testing you do, the better. So then I'm explaining this website, and it won't be long before I click on something. And I guess I'm just showing you all the things that are on this website. There's my forehead down there. Not forehead, head. A lot of material here. Uh, other people visit the website, but up on top, you can see where I'm going to click Physiology of Domestic Animals. This is kind of the home page for that, all kinds of material on top. There's the home button, which uh, I'm making the laser pointer go too fast. But anyway, home gets you back to that main page, but then there's announcement syllabus, there's other stuff here. And then down at the bottom here, we talked about hematology. You should know that um, the definition of that word, hema means blood, or hemato is also blood, and ology at the end always means the study of. So the first week of class, there it is, August 21st, uh, 2017, on the far left, we're studying hematology. Well, then there's videos to watch, 
and the, the clicks below the video are usually some text someplace, usually not my own. I go to websites like Merc, Merc Vet Manual and then rely on those people and some of the clicks are my own, whatever. And then on the far right there we're going to have an assessment on Thursday, 824. And I do think when I, uh, one of the parts I skipped over is, you know, we're in a certain classroom Monday through Wednesday, and then Thursday we go to a different classroom and take the assessment. And so now I'm wondering what I'm talking about here. I'm just trying to make sure that I say the things I did, and I think I'm going to just stop there for a second and probably maybe I was answering a question. Okay, so let's hear. Uh, oh, I know what. I think maybe I talked about those clicks. I probably talked about the video links. And if you click on the video links, which there it is, you go to my YouTube channel, and this is showing the lessons. Oops, okay, good. Hold on a second. Okay, now we're back, and that click led us to YouTube, and there's a whole bunch of videos, and we were supposed to read, or er, view, one through eight, which is basically blood. Uh, the first one is, I think, an introduction to me, the instructor. That's right here. I can also superimpose a pointer. And then learning suggestions. And then the material on blood actually starts on the video three there. And I told the people that this is actually made for a course called Biology Companion Animals when the focus is dogs, cats, and horses. And our present course, Physiology of Domestic Animals, covers all the domestic animals. But this is my way of letting you peel back the onion one layer first at your leisure. And then when we meet face-to-face -face in class, then I can talk about maybe more things in detail that were on the video, but then also add in cows, pigs, sheep, whatever, that aren't mentioned at all in the videos that are linked to. Okay, so let's see, I can actually move this faster than it was originally. Um, so, talking about the assessment on Thursday, blah, blah, blah. I'm saying blah, blah, blah because I um, can't remember exactly what I said. Nothing, well, obviously important, but I should say it's obviously important. But at the moment, I can't remember what I said there. Uh, but be careful, and I'm going to talk about being active, being an active learner. So everybody in class today was very passive, right? 90 people staring at the front of the room, and I was the only one working, only the one talking. So let's see what happened here. Okay, I went to the document cam because I was going to show them when we met in class. And so in this grid work I have here, and I know I'll be talking about it, or there'll be a pointer coming. But anyway, we meet 11.30, Monday through Thursday. And we talk about how we're in our same room, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but then Thursday for the assessment, we're in a different room. But it's important to note that on Tuesday, the room is available at 10.30, there's no class in that before us. So you could come and talk to me, the TAs, whatever. And then we have the regular class. And then also we're, we can stay there the hour after class and chit chat. So we did that. Um, and then I think on the regular lecture, I forgot to point out, I'm going to do this tomorrow, the second day of class, that on Thursday, when we go to the other building, that room is available to us at 10.30, so you could come and study for an hour before. I mean, obviously, if you have a class, you can't do this. But people that ha are free could come and study the hour before the assessment. Now, the assessment doesn't take the whole hour at 11.30 there, or <coughs> excuse me, where my black pointer is. But we'll have some lecture material, answer questions, and then have the assessment and it's a big enough room that you can go whenever you get done and you won't really 
trample over people and then I'm coming back to the back of the room to shut the computer off for a minute the video okay now we're back um, it's something about file size in the camera I'm using I have to reset it or stop it and then let it go again it's a technical thing <laughs> tomorrow I'm gonna make sure my cables plugged in so the audio is recorded but actually this tells me that it shows up pretty good because that's just a little card I have to remind me where I'm at at certain times and to let students know where I'm at if they need to find me. I'm not sure what I'm talking about there. Probably active learning, come and learn. I know on next Monday when classes, uh, the second week of classes, and I can't remember if I told people today, but the TAs are going to run the class on Monday and they're going to do a variety of things review the assessments, look for new questions, ask the audience to generate questions. Um, we'll have a, a list of things that the TAs can do and time will fly by. Oops, there's the, let me go back here for a minute. There's a part of the bull penis I'm holding up and now I'm telling them about the human food grade bull penis and that means it's USDA DA inspected just like a T-bone steak or, you know, brisket or whatever. And some countries in the world make soup out of the bull penis, and I don't recall which ones those are. But it's really nice to know that it's inspected to the point where that bull penis is going to be very pure and not have any diseases. And then there's a company, like I said earlier, smokes it, I think it's like 72 hours at 170 degrees Fahrenheit and it comes out very rigid and totally digestible. I've had like 30 animals, uh, 30 dogs chew on those things by different own and the different owners tell me never has anybody had any uh, problem with those and that's exactly what I was hoping You've got to be careful because some treats are really soaked in chemicals and made to do whatever. I don't know. There I am at the bottom of the screen. Now we're going to do something else like go to the maybe quizzes or something. Let's see if it does it in a second. I won't worry about it. Going to the syllabus. Okay, there's a syllabus on the website for this class. I didn't read anything. Ah, uh, yeah, but I know one thing that I did is under course topics and course subtopics, I said for this coming Thursday, you should know the definition of all those words. And what I did is I asked a few people what those terms were, but near the end I said for Thursday's assessment, all that material is eligible. And it's just a simple definition. Now I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. Uh, and everybody can go to the syllabus and read it on their own and ask questions if they have any questions. There's that laser pointer whipping around on the screen. I'm advancing it quite fastly here. Um, what is happening now? Oh, I know what. Back here, underneath <laughs> this image that's floating, there's a thing that says quiz. See how it says quizzes let's read the whole thing online quizzes and crossword puzzles works on all devices iPads smartphones computers whatever and if you click that then you'll go to this next page right there and there's a whole list every link there every click is a quiz some of them are graded as each question goes on some of them are graded at the end like you answer 15 questions then you see what you're going the cattle one I point to is empty right now because Hannah has to give me her file that she was working on. So now what I said is let's go down and do blood. I want to give a couple examples of the blood one. There's always something about welcome to whatever and then you're going to receive 20 random questions from a bucket of 64. So if you only do the quiz once, you've missed for sure 44 questions, right? When you do the quiz again a second time, you'll get a random 20 questions out of the bucket. Now, so some of them might be duplicate of the first time you took it, but a lot of them would be new. And so if you took it three, four times, you'd probably see all the questions. 
But I did it that way so I make a lot of questions, but a lot of people don't want to answer 64 questions at one time. So anyway, so I had submit. Then I orally talked about parenchymal cells of the liver. And I said, I can't remember if I said it before we found the answer, but I said the parenchymal cells are the cells that do the work for the organ named. You could have parenchymal cells of the kidney. You could have parenchymal cells of the pancreas. This one says parenchymal cells of the liver. So parenchymal is a general term that means those cells that are working the most, that are, you know, make the liver what, what the liver is. So then I went through each answer because for each answer, look at that six. You can't guess if you don't know your stuff. So the point is, you read it, parenchymal cells of the liver are dead and awaiting removal. Well, that kind of goes with what I said about they're the ones that are doing all the work. So the second answer really is the correct one. Parenchymal cells of the liver are the functional cells of the liver. And I suggested you write that down in your notes. Write that phrase down. The other, and you should know all the other answers, why they're wrong. Okay, yeah, I'm, we're just uh, <laughs> going through different files. Like, the files are so big, like each file is four gigs, and I made like maybe 30 gigs. So anyway, so I go through and talk about why each answer is wrong other than the second answer on this sheet, on this uh, screen, I should say. So you should know why they're wrong rather than say, oh, what's that? <laughs> what's the right answer? So now I'm going to skip ahead a little bit here. You probably can't see what I'm doing. But I'm going to go to the second question I clicked on. See, and it tells you on that one, if you hit continue, it'll tell you if it's right or not. And then I'll go to the next question, which is this one. <clears throat> Mature red blood cells in the cow lack. <clears throat> Sorry, been a long day talking. So there's six choices, and I'm very good at making distractors, so, you know, be careful. Uh, in the short story here, mature red blood cells in the cow lack pigment. That's wrong because uh, it's red, um, and hemoglobin is a pigment. Anyway, met hemoglobin is wrong. Lack of cell membrane, no, they do have a cell membrane. Lack hemoglobin, no, that's what's in every red blood cell if it's doing its job. The fifth answer down from the top is the correct one in this case. Mature red blood cells in the cow lack a nucleus. So they are anuclear. All, and when you say anuclear, that's all one word, meaning they lack a nucleus. And then, of course, water is a terrible answer because basically 65% of every structure in the body is water. Okay, so like a big cow, cow big horse, 65% in total is water. <clears throat> but all those cells have a lot of water in and around them. So I can't hit submit here, submit because this is a recording. But when we hit submit, I'm talking about all those answers now. Let's get to the choices here. I'm looking for the answer. Oh, you know, let, me, let me pause this. No, no, that's right. I'm going to let it go because it's the perhaps the next one. There was somebody had a great question. Maybe it was on another, okay, I know what it was. It was probably something I said uh, during that um, liver one. So let me pause that. <clears throat> and while this is just sitting there, let me tell you about a question I had given orally. And then I'll tell you the answer because somebody gave a beautiful, incorrect answer. Yeah, it looks like I paused there. Okay, there it is. That was correct, a nucleus. Let's see where I go after this. Oh, people are leaving. So, yeah. Okay, let me pause right here then. That's the end of class. The only thing that was missing there is when I was doing the liver. Let's go back to the liver. Now, remember, this is learning. So, this usually doesn't happen. Um, tomorrow, when I record it, I'm hoping the cable is going to be working right. Let me go back to the liver. Mr. Liver, oops, maybe I don't, okay, okay, there it is, there's that question, so then you remember that the answer to that question was the second choice, the functional, parenchymal cells of the liver are the functional cells of the liver, then I think I asked, um, 
in the fetus, and I maybe said early, it could be early fetus, in the early fetus, this, uh, okay, here's, here's how I did it. In the early fetus, red blood cells are produced by the, and so maybe it was prompted by this one when we're talking about red blood cells. So I added a question that's not on there visually. In the fetus, red blood cells are produced by the blank. Okay, that was the question I posed. And here was a beautiful incorrect answer. So listen to this. In the fetus, red blood cells are produced by the blank. And somebody said, the mom. Because I said the bone marrow wasn't yet producing the red blood cells. So this person thought the mom was making red blood cells for the fetus the offspring the mom is carrying. And I said, oh, that's a beautiful answer. I like the thinking, but it's incorrect. There's no mother that's going to make red blood cells and pass them to the fetus. It just doesn't work that way, at least in our domestic animals. But I congratulated her for saying an answer that we could actually learn from. Okay? So the answer to this question is, Red blood cells in the fetus are produced by the blank, and the blank, the answer for the blank is the liver. The liver in the fetus, especially the early fetus, makes red blood cells for the fetus. And that's pretty outstanding. A lot of times you don't get that in books, but that's how we kind of ended the class. So sorry about the voiceover tomorrow, the second day of class. I'm going to make sure my cables are plugged in. but. It's a little on the crude side because the camera sits at the back of the room, but it doesn't show up too bad. So without a production company behind me, this is how I'm going to do it.